Greetings Laura. My name's William. Um, I just uh, stumbled upon a video of you today talking about things that I'm quite familiar with and a lot of people are of course nowadays but have been growing within it for many years now. Uh, and I just have a few comments to make regarding the aspect of duality and the patriarch matriarch gender warfare really what I what I myself have learnt even with my own expression definitely with my own expression but also in, in what I hear being expressed um, from the external uh, I look for the component of duality um, and for me when I hear people who are, 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 are trying to get across a message such as you are um, about the the aspect of duality which is um, preventing us from as a, as a species from from um, evolving um, into a more uh, into a wise species a sentient species um, and it's this aspect of duality which in mythology is quite well represented in the story of the Garden of Eden when you talk about the divine fem feminine um, in, in this video that I um, watched this morning um, and you say that um, you're not you're not so much speaking of um, of of female male because within females there's a masculine and within males there's a feminine. You're talking about something which, in a sense, usurp the the true goddess, earth goddess. Um, and that that something is a mask of masculine. Uh, in my own, in my own life lesson, I've come to understand the possibility that this this masculine patriarch um, usurper, veiling what you call the goddess. Um, and putting himself up as the only one true God. Um, have you ever thought of the possibility that behind that is a feminine aspect? Um, it's a very hard question to ask or even hear in, in some regard. I've spent many years on a particular forum uh, being bashed as, as some kind of horrible male, if you like, for um, presenting ideas which need to be talked about because and recognised because they're part of mythology. Uh, Lilith, or the woman scorned. The Lilith, the Lilith um, mythology um, speaks of a, um, a feminine um, a feminine aspect which um, came before Eve was gifted to Adam and that this female was uh, in this particular mythology was, was rejected by Adam and so God made Eve and since then Lilith's job has been to um, her has been basically her um, she, uh, she is all out to destroy humanity and so what I'm trying to um, say I guess is that um, when we're talking about this earth um, female or female male masculine feminine or um, any number of these things we still 
uh, within the paradigm of duality and I feel that we need to really be able to move beyond that um, she is not a she he is not a he it is it it may be both female and male as we as we tend to understand things with our dual working brain but there is more to this universe than female and male okay so now that I've identified um, at this aspect which in mythology is known by many names but the one I've chosen is Lilith to stay in the theme of duality Adam and Eve tree of knowledge tree of life the Bible um, the God of the Israelites the God of the Christians and the God of the um, Islam God of Islam this fear inducing male patriarch God concept where did it come from what is it about if we if we tear that veil or, or fling that veil aside and, um, and see the veil as the duality aspect then we need to redefine what this is that we that you're calling that many call the divine fem feminine where is the divine masculine without the duality we can combine the two into one and perhaps from this point I will I will come from another direction now in my own personal travels and communion with this divine aspect of what we as humanity come from this aspect has and you're quite correct is in, in some uh, in the best way to, to look at it is with the planet earth consciousness the spirit the divine entered therein and from there evolved out forms in which it can experience life through and in experiencing life through the veil is put up because the human instrument uh, isn't capable of of having this information um, this greater information um, for whatever reasons it, uh, there's, there's the myth mythology again of, of, of the Anunnaki and Anu and, and that family playing around, monkeying around with um, the DNA so that we would not be able to um, be in contact with that greater truth we can be um, but uh, in cutting to that chase if you like I'm coming from a perspective where the earth entity within its surface reality and the human experience is connected to all of us and we are it in a sense but because we're in an individual framework we operate as individuals in separatism and duality and it has been the task of this divine entity living within the form of the planet earth or even more specifically within the form of the solar system but within the planet earth where all the life is, is 
be forming, has formed, and is forming and it continues to do so, there has been a wall between that and the creation, or the, the, the creator aspect, the divine aspect with the created, um, which has been um, hard to to bridge and so what it has had to do is be all of these myths together it has had to deal with us as individuals and as uh, tribal units etc etc to this full blown 6-7 billion people on on, on as one tribe in a sense and heading that way so it has to deal with what it's got to deal with so it deals with us on an individual basis through our beliefs and so it takes on the part of those beliefs the important thing is that when we we, we are beginning to awaken to that sense of there's more to this than meets the eye <coughs> Excuse me. And as individuals, we we travel down. We choose paths to, to investigate, and we take the baggage of our belief systems with us, whatever those belief systems are. So, if we think God is a male, masculine, Jesus, and all the rest of that, then that is the way the divine um, presents itself to us. Now, if we can learn, as as I myself have learned device and, um, and, and heart and, and this human instrument and the external what we call the external which is not really external it's another internal external is another um, is another expression of duality so it's not really external but we see it as that from our perspective through this human instrument learning to synchronize our experience with the greater outside reality which is not outside inside Radi Ra. okay in this communication this is what was revealed to me through this communication that indeed it is all of these things it is none not, not there is no separatist whether it's there is no enemy there is no devil there is no there are these lower things but these all these lower things things come about because it is the it is the desire for want of a better word um, for the divine within the divine to connect with its outposts of itself in the separate forms that we are and so it will and does use all available means in order to get that connection but we need to understand and allow for that divine to let us know and break through those belief systems and so therefore we need to um, allow for that information to have its effect in cutting away those branches of belief systems which are no longer valid or um, have any, any real purpose except to keep us separate from each other and from that divine whether it be Lilith or or the god of the um, the western you know the, the god of the main religions or um, you know the one true god the male or the devil whatever whatever it's all of those so in, a, in effect it is it is playing a divine role which it's quite capable of playing and when I say it I am I'm not it's 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 no it's it's not derogatory or it by saying it rather than he or she it's not disrespectful it's just a matter of that's the way it is the divine we are the divine if we can learn to drop away all of those um, feminine masculine etc weapons of warfare in a sense and separation then we are better equipped 
to hear what the divine is willing for uh, in relation to us 